So proteins are a very diverse set of molecules. Uh, you'll find them absolutely everywhere in your body and in your biology course. They will not leave you alone. Um, proteins range from enzymes which catalyze reactions to antibodies which will save you if you are sick. Uh, they also include structural proteins which hold you together. So proteins are very diverse. The monomer of proteins is the amino acid. The amino acid. And these can be strung together in very, very large uh, polymers, uh, which can be known as proteins. Uh, they don't always end up as proteins, though, okay? They can just be polypeptides, meaning many peptide bonds, which is what holds the amino acids together. So bond equals peptide. Peptide bond. And these are achieved through the dehydration reaction, as we mentioned in the uh, previous video. Now, proteins can be organized into different structures. Uh, we like to do this so we can look at different uh, areas of how the protein is folded and condensed into its final shape. So we start off with the primary structure, which is the what, what we call the chain of amino acids. Chain of amino acids. This is a linear chain, and we just look at how these amino acids are linked together in order. So I won't name any amino acids because that will just confuse you, but Let's use shapes to represent them. So we have a triangle one connected to a circle one, maybe connected to a square one, and so on. Now, in humans, we actually use 20 amino acids. 20. 20 amino acids, AA for amino acid. Now, we have 20, and they all string together to make pretty much an endless variety of different shapes of proteins, which is quite amazing, considering there's only 20 of them, and we have such a diverse selection of them. Now, the secondary structure of proteins is when these start folding up to make different shapes. And the two most common shapes you'll hear of is the alpha helix, which is like a coil shape. Helix. And the pleated sheet, sometimes known as the beta pleated sheet. Pleated sheet. And the secondary structure is actually achieved through hydrogen bonds hydrogen bonds so these these hydrogen bonds will actually cause this protein to fold up into these interesting shapes I might change colors just between them, I might even separate these so you don't get them confused there you go right, let's go back to green now the tertiary structure is when this starts folding up to make what we call the 3D shape 3D shape and this is where you have many, many secondary structures starting to condense together. Shap, shape. There we go. Uh, and this is achieved through some bonds called um, disulfide bonds. Disulfide bridges sometimes. Disulfide. Disulfide bridges. Um, also through hydrophobic interactions. Hydro. Hydrophobic meaning they are scared of water. Hydrophobic. Hydrophobic interactions. I'm trying to fit that in. And lastly, the quaternary structure, which is not found in every single protein, but in some of them, such as hemoglobin in your blood. The quaternary structure is achieved through having multiple polypeptides, so not multiple proteins, multiple multiple polypeptides. Saying multiple proteins is technically wrong. Multiple polypeptides. And these are linked together, so they're sort of tangled into each other to be able to achieve this structure. So, linked together. Linked together. That's a very, very rough together. Um, these are also achieved through the disulfide bridges and hydrophobic interactions. Now, proteins are sort of easily broken. So what factors affect the protein shape? That's right in purple. So many factors can actually destroy a protein. When we destroy a protein completely, beyond repair, we say it is denatured. Denatured. This is when it will lose its shape and no longer be able to go back to that shape. So you. Okay, so what can denature a protein? Things that can denature a protein are heat. Heat can. So we often say the proteins have an optimum temperature, and this is the temperature that they will act best at. 
and if we go over that temperature we risk denaturing it so optimum temperature optimum temperature now if we go below that we do not necessarily destroy it so maybe if we go 20 degrees colder or even freezing point we may not destroy the protein if we heat it back up it can go back and still work but if we exceed the optimum temperature and we actually heat it up too much it'll start boiling and well not boiling but starting to fall apart and it'll be beyond repair pH can also affect, no it's not right in yellow, let's write in hot pink so, so pH pH an excessively high or low pH for that protein which will also have an optimum pH will destroy it so optimum pH um, so an example is pepsin in your stomach has a very very low pH pH of around 1 or 2 1 or 2 uh, very acidic whereas most proteins will actually be broken up by that sort of pH because it is excessively acidic other things that can affect your protein shape is the salt level so salt salt concentration too salty or maybe even not so salty depending on what the protein is meant to achieve might actually destroy the protein so that is a quick overview of what can actually you know, make and break your proteins they're very diverse and there'll probably be many videos to come about specific kinds of proteins like I mentioned in the start of the video so I hope this has uh, piqued your interest in proteins <laughs>